you're like me and you've seen some of Iman Gaji's or Sebastian Georgiou's thumbnails, you probably know how much time and money are spent into making those thumbnails. And you want to make thumbnails similar to theirs, but you don't want to spend money on Photoshop. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make thumbnails like a lot of the pro YouTubers out there using a free photo editing website called Pixlr. And obviously they're not going to be perfect because Pixlr doesn't have as many options as Photoshop, but they're going to be pretty close. All right, so what I'm going to do is just, uh, replicate one of his thumbnails and let's just choose this one and I did uh, I took a picture of myself doing the same pose as he's doing the thumbnail so I'm just gonna cut that out and basically how you cut that out you can do it multiple ways but uh, the way I like to do it because it's the fastest is I open up paint 3d on uh, on Windows it's actually comes pre-installed with Windows 10 if you don't have it I'll show you another way um, right after this but for now uh, just follow along if you do have Paint 3D on your computer. So once you click new, just drop your photo into Paint 3D. Okay, you can see there's my photo. Okay, so then once you have it selected, you're gonna click up here on Magic Select, and then you have to uh, adjust the borders to be around you, but uh, make sure you don't cut yourself off. So just enough so that I can detect that you're there. And you click next. Okay, you see it did a pretty decent job. And now you can either add or remove stuff. Okay, so if you wanna be more precise, you can maybe trace around yourself like this with the line. Basically with the line, you're just telling it what you don't want selected. If you're on the remove thing, if you're on the add thing, it's a different story, but. Okay, so you did a pretty good job there. I just wanna get this part below my ear and then it should be good. All right, that's good enough for me. And then um, let's check if it missed any other parts. Okay, I see it missed a little part down by my arm. So I just want to remove that from the selection. Draw a line there. Okay, draw a line there. And I missed a little part over there. All right. looking decent okay and then I think yeah the rest is good so then you just want to uncheck autofill background you don't need to have that and then you just click done from there and then what you're gonna do once you have this selected you're gonna hit control C all right so before we start I'm just gonna show the people who don't have paint 3d how to cut yourself out and you can do this with multiple ways. I'm just gonna show a couple other ways to do it if you don't have Paint 3D. So the first step way you can try is if you wanna do it like faster, you can do want select and sometimes, I mean, you might have to play with the tolerance. It depends how complicated your background is, but uh, that might be an option for you. And then if your, comp if your background is too complicated for the AI to detect uh, what is you and what isn't, then what you're gonna have to do is um, use the polygon tool and then you will just zoom in and then polygon lasso around yourself. And then I'm gonna just do a really rough one just for example sake. All right, so pretend I accurately uh, cut around myself. Then what you wanna do is just click on select, invert selection, delete the rest, and then you have your cut out of yourself and then control D to deselect. But, um, I'm not gonna be doing that for now. And then the final method of doing it is you just go to the home of Pixlr E, click on that button, remove BG, select photo, and then you can select your photo and it will remove the background. You can't really adjust it from there. It will either do a good job or it won't. You kind of just have to test that out and it really depends how complicated your background is. So anyway, now what you wanna do is just put your PNG in there like so, right? And then I'm just gonna pull up this photo just for example sake, so I can show you guys. Um, actually, it's facing the other way, so what I'm gonna do is flip it real quick. Okay, you can see it's a lot bigger on the screen, so I'm gonna just zoom myself in a lot more. Like, okay, that's good. So then, for now, just so I don't like move this around, I'm just going to right click on this layer and then click 
locked and now I, I can't mess with it until I unlock it. So then I'm gonna pull this up and what I'm gonna do is just go on Google and search for all of these icons that he has behind his head. I'm gonna try my best to find these icons off of Google. I probably won't be able to find the exact ones, but let's just go on Google Images real quick. Right, so I found this icon that's pretty close to this one. You can just drag it out. And by the way, if you want a PNG, we don't need a PNG. We could use one with a, a white background because uh, that's what the icon is. But how to tell if it's a PNG, if it appears as a white background on the actual image and then when you click on it, it turns transparent. That's how you know if it's a PNG. Otherwise, if it doesn't do that, then you might have to go on the website and download it from there. All right, so I'm gonna just get the rest of the icon. So I'll just come back to you guys once I'm done that. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and, and by the way, if you click this eyeball, you can hide a layer, unhide a layer. And uh, that's basically how that works. And then what I'm gonna do now is just take the PNGs and I'm going to put them on a bunch of white circles like he has here and then have a green outline and then I'm gonna put a shadow on it because uh, that's what it looks like it has from uh, what I see from this thumbnail. Basically what I'm gonna do is just drop all of these icons at once into Pixlr and then I'm just click add current. All right and then we have a lot of them so I'm gonna just do one at a time so I can just hide each one of these as I go. All right so what I'm gonna do first is uh, go to the shape tool and go to circle. And then I'm going to grab a white circle. And then uh, if it's doing this, all you have to do is just hold shift and then you'll get a perfect circle. Okay, and then you can move that around and then hold alt and then drag on it and then it should copy. So that's what you can do. And let me see how many does he have in the thumbnail. It looks like I need to put this all the way up at the top. And by the way, if you want to send something to the front, you just drag it to the top of the layers. All right, so it looks like he has six of them. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller, like about this big. And then hold Alt and drag, that's basically how you do it. All right, and then I'm gonna need to put my, the PNG cut out of me above these so some of them can go behind my head. So I'm gonna just drag that all the way up to the top pretty much. And then what I'm gonna do is try my best to evenly space these out. I'll delete these because these are too big. And then just do that. This one needs to go a lot more behind my head, like there. Okay, that, that looks, that looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna just keep it like that. Oh, and what I actually need to do before I, I did that was, um, make a green outline. So you just go, you click on the shape, uh, make sure you're on the shape tool, otherwise it won't show this. Then you click on styles and then you uh, turn on outline. I'm gonna make it bright green like it is in the thumbnail. And then turn up the size a little bit. I'll just do seven, it looks pretty good. And then also notice there's a shadow. So you put a shadow after, um, make sure it's on black and just turn up the opacity a little bit and, and then turn up the blur a little bit as much as you would like. And that should be pretty good. Now I'm actually gonna delete these because I realized that I needed to make the outline and shadow first. All right, so once we have these, then I'm just gonna unhide each of the PNGs one by one. I'm gonna match them up to the thumbnails. And by the way, if you don't wanna hide something, but you don't want it to like get in the way and like move around when you're trying to mess with it, all you, all you have to do is uh, go ahead and then um, right click on that layer and then click locked and it won't move. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just lock all of these circles so they don't get in the way. Let me actually full screen. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and lock all of these. And what you can actually do is delete this history thing so you can see more of the layers and then move this all the way up to the top so it's above all the circles. And I'm gonna just do that for all of the images so I don't have to do it later. All right, so now I'm just gonna resize each of my icons and uh, put them where it is on the thumbnail, so let me just unhide to see. And I didn't get the exact icons, but uh, I didn't feel like looking for the exact ones, but I'm sure you guys get the idea. So I'm gonna just put them on each one. So that should be good. And I'm gonna go ahead and unhide this one. And good.
All right, so now I got all my icons done. Let's check. It's pretty, looking pretty decent. All right, then for the background, it just looks like he used his room. In this case, I'm not gonna use my background because it's red, it doesn't really fit with what I'm going for. So what I'm gonna look for is, I'm gonna go on Google Images and then look up light interior. And this is usually pretty decent if you're looking for like a normal, like a natural looking background. And you can just select one of them that doesn't t look too uh, out of place. And it doesn't really matter what you choose because you're going to be blurring it pretty heavily. And um, the attention's not really going to be on that. So I'm actually going to search gray interior. And you can go through the different ones. And all right, so I'm going to select this one, just drag it, put it in my folder, and then go ahead and put this in the background. I need, now I need to drag this all the way back. Like so. All right, so now that is good. Looks like I need to resize it a little bit to fit. All right, should be good. Doesn't really matter if it's perfect. All you uh, really gotta do is just uh, make sure it covers up the whole background. And then if I look at the thumbnail, you can see it's pretty heavily blurred and um, darkened up. So what you have to go ahead and do and is go to brightness, brightness and contrast and then turn that pretty much all the way down or maybe like 70 is a pretty good number. And then you want to go ahead and hit apply. And then um, what you can also do is put a vignette on there. That's usually good for setting the attention to the middle because it kind of darkens around the edges. So now the attention is in the middle on my face. And then uh, finally, what you want to do the background, and by the way, make sure you're on the correct layer because otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, you want to go ahead and click filter, details, filter details, and then go to Gaussian blur and turn that up. So now you can see I pop out a lot more than I would have. And now what we're going to do is uh, edit the PNG of me a little bit. So select the PNG of you, I'm assuming uh, this is going to be a view or of maybe you're working for a client. You want to go ahead to adjustment and then turn the brightness up so you pop out more. Click on highlights and shadows and then you want to up the highlights a little bit so you pop out more and maybe darken the shadows a little bit like so. This is a quick way of doing it. You can do this as detailed as you want but for the sake of uh, this example I'm just going to do it pretty quickly and usually I go ahead to brightness and I adjust that a little bit and contrast until I like it and then see now I'm going to go to hue and saturation boost the saturation up a little bit not too much to the point where it looks unnatural but this is looking pretty okay okay so then what I'm gonna do is just sharpen up my eyes a little bit so how you basically do that is you go into you go into uh, this one where it's like the half circle thing uh, called dodge and burn um, make sure you're selected on the png layer view and then make sure you're on lighten and midtones and then what you want to do is turn the strength down to something that's not too high so like maybe 10 and adjust the brush size to the point where it makes sense um, to draw in your eyes with. So then what you want to do from there is just line up your eyes a little bit like so. Don't go too crazy because you don't want it to look too unrealistic, but you just want it to catch people's attention basically. So just go ahead and, and line those places up by clicking and, and moving it around. And then what you can do to enhance it a little more is click on this water droplet icon like so make sure you're selected and then click on sharpen and then you want to do the same thing you want to turn the strength down you don't want it to be too much like 10 is pretty good and turn down the size a lot and you just want to sharpen your eyes a little bit so just go around your eyes like so it doesn't have to be too much 
Alright. So now you can see my eyes pop out a lot more. Uh, it doesn't look too unrealistic. And I'd say it's pretty good. So then what you can go go ahead and do is lock the layer again so you don't have to mess with it. So then what I'm going to go ahead and do is add the final element, which is the text. For the text, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this. And for the text, what you want to do is click on this text thing. Uh, just click here, add text. And then you might have to um, download fonts. And I'll show you real quick. So I use this font. Uh, it's a pretty good font for thumbnails. It's like you basically want to get any font that's just like big and bold because that works well for thumbnails. I'm not going to show you in this video, but uh, just you can go ahead and download a font from one of those font websites like defont.com or, or something like that or Google Fonts. And then once you installed it, you can just click add local font and then find like the font folder. Uh, like I have this one. And for example, if I wanted to install the bold font, and I just click on this and then it would uh, drop it into here, which I already have it, but um, hopefully that kind of explains it. I'm just going to use this font and I'm just going to copy the exact number dollars. Like so. Alright, then what I'm going to do is make a white. I'm going to increase the size to like this big. And then I'm going to click on format and italicize it. Make sure it's centered. And let's just check real quick. See, okay, you can see it's pretty solid. Uh, it's, it's very similar and uh, actually it's above this. I don't want it to be there. All right, and then we're just gonna put some a soft shadow on it by just going to styles, shadow, and then we're just gonna, going to uh, change it to black and then turn up the opacity a good amount like so. And there you have it. It's pretty much as close as you can get. I know uh, the lighting is off a little bit on the picture of me. I know that his image is a lot more high quality, but uh, that's not really something that's in my control. But I'd say that it's pretty close. And uh, if you have like a better camera quality, then I'm sure your thumbnail will look closer than mine. I hope this helped and I hope you got a basic idea of uh, how to make a pretty similar thumbnail. Right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you kind of found this helpful and hopefully you see this as a good free option to make thumbnails similar to Iman, uh, Sebastian, Georgiou, and just popular YouTubers like that. If you have any questions, you can just leave it in the comments below and then I'll try my best to answer them. And this is the video that YouTube recommends you should watch next, so just click on that video.